Hello and welcome. This is our uh, second episode of our series um, under African skies. Today we're going to talk about Malawi. And it is my very great pleasure to introduce Lucy in a moment. Uh, but first, I want us to get in the spirit. I want us to transform, uh, transport ourselves from this rather cold and uh, dark evening in November to see the African continent. So with that, I will um, share my screen with you. There will be an opportunity to ask questions at the end, our speaker. Um, so if you could please use the chat function for that, that would be great. Today, our guide is um, from UWM, a faculty member in the College of Nursing. Uh, Lucy Makanda Wirivamo is going to be our very special guide today to her homeland. We're very happy to have you, Lucy. Please take it away. Thank you so much, Dr. Creighton, and um, to the UWM Planetarium for um, this opportunity to share uh, Malawi with everybody. So um, as you mentioned, I'll be your guide to uh, the warm heart of Africa, uh, a country of about 18 million people in Southeast Africa. So Malawi, um, as I mentioned, is in Southeast Africa and our neighbors are Zambia, Tanzania, and Mozambique. And, um, you know, we share a border with these countries. We consider them our brothers and sisters. Um, and so we have a peaceful coexistence with them, um, doing trade and um, engaging with one another. Of course, in uh, more recent years, we have had some conflict with Tanzania about um, Lake Malawi to the north, um, which, is mostly as a result of colonialism and the way in which borders were drawn, um, which is you know, problematic for, for African peoples generally. But um, in this region of Africa, we have experienced um, similar problems to the rest of the continent. But otherwise, apart from that particular co um, conflict, we um, live peaceably with our neighbors. You did mention, uh, and I, in our in some private conversations we've had, how interestingly uh, Malawi is surrounded by Mozambique and all the southern part. And you mentioned that sometimes people cross borders to do grocery shopping uh, just because um, it makes sense. That's where the closest grocery store is. Yeah. And so in some parts of um, central Malawi, particularly. 
um, where we share a border with Mozambique, but we also share a border with them to, um, to the south. Um, people come and go, and we have uh, women seeking prenatal care and giving birth um, at our health centers, children coming to go to school in Malawi. So, um, you know, the borders again on the African continent are very problematic because we're the same people. Um, with many of the Mozambicans along the border, we share, we speak the same language, uh, we share the same culture, we eat the same food. And so it's difficult to even distinguish between them and us, only that um, if you were to travel, you would hold a different passport. So um, yeah, it's, it's very complicated in that way. Let's look at three kind of special places in the country. So the capital of Malawi is Lilongwe, and that's where I was born, even though um, my family and I were from northern Malawi and uh, my mother's family, my, my, my family from my mother's side is from central Malawi, but I was born um, in Lilongwe, so that's the capital city, and so that looks very different from when you go to the rural, pop to the rural areas where about 85% um, of Malawians live. Speaking of which. We have a giant lake, um, which is actually called Lake of Stars. So, um, which is really pertinent to this <laughs> um, program and I can talk about that later. But yeah, um, we have a giant lake that runs across, uh, uh, across most of the country, as you can see. So um, it's a very important, um, resource to us in terms of uh, water, but also fish, um, and so on. Tell us about the research that's happening there, even UWM is, is part of. Yes, so Lake Malawi has um, the most species of fish um, of any lake in the world, so about 700 um, different species of fish are found in Lake Malawi. And so some of our colleagues at the School of Freshwater Sciences, uh, like um, Dr. Bootsma and his team, they have a research station on Lake Malawi. So UWM is very um, closely connected to this lake. And that is uh, Sapitwa uh, on Mount Mulanje. Mount Mulanje is the highest peak in that Central African region. And so, um, you know, uh, compared to, to give you um, a, a comparative analysis, Kilimanjaro is about 19,000 feet and Mount Mulanje is about 9,000 feet. So it's pretty high. Um, and Sabidwa, uh, which is the upper, the top, the topmost part of the mountain means in, in, the, in our native language in Chichewa, it means don't go there. And um, there are a lot of, um, mystical um, stories about, you know, about Sapitwa. And when foreigners go up the mountain, a lot of people go up to hike, they're cautioned to make sure that they go with um, the local people um, to make sure that they don't disappear because the stories are that there are spirits up on the mountain and that oftentimes they'll take people away. And so it's really important to make sure that you you follow the path that the guides are taking you through and you don't um, get taken away by spirits and people have actually gone missing up on the mountain. I see. Here's the beautiful flag. Please tell us about it. Yeah, so this is the flag of Malawi. Uh, the green represents the greenery of the country. Um, the red represents the blood um, of the matters that was spilled for our independence. The black represents uh, the black, the proud black people of the African continent. Although we know that um, we have um, diversity and we have different people on, on the African continent who also call Africa home. We have a lot of people, especially in Malawi, we have a large population of um, Asians who also you know, have, have been in Malawi for generations and don't know any other home but Malawi. Um, we also have a lot of um, Scottish people who came um, in, the, in the last century, and so that they consider Malawi their home as well. So I just wanted to point that out. 
but um, the sun, um, the, the rays of the sun um, speak to the dawn of a new day following our independence in 1964. Beautiful. Tell us about the top exports uh, of the country. So our top exports in Malawi include um, sugar. We grow a lot of sugar cane um, and then tea. We also have a lot of tea, particularly in Southern Malawi, we grow tea. Um, you know, the tea that you, some of the teas that you um, take at some of the coffee shops, you should, um, you should look them up. You probably will find Malawian tea. Um, usually for, for people who, who know a lot about tea, teas are actually mixed together. So um, you have Malaysian tea mixed with Malawian tea and Malawian tea gives the tea the color because of the, the clay on, at the soil on which it is grown. It's very red. Um, so it gives the, um, the, the color, whereas other teas from other parts of the world like Kenya, um, you might be taking that tea for the flavor. So, so uh, teas tend to be mixed in that way. So tea is a big export for us. And then tobacco, which is a controversial one, but it's actually our top most um, export. And um, you know, with uh, smoking cessation now, the push for smoking cessation, that has had a major impact on our economy um, because that is a major export for us. We didn't talk about this, but I'm wondering if there are um, are there any attempts to try and diversify to different crops? I think, you know, agriculturalists, uh, you know, we have a whole agribusiness industry. So I think they are looking at um, crop diversification, but we're also looking at other ways in which we can um, diversify the economy, for example, through tourism. So I think the current government is really working hard to make sure that we, we boost our tourism industry. Wonderful. And we have now a series of um, cultural and historical uh, things that we need to know about Malawi. Yeah, so Malawi has a very strong um, women's movement. So in fact, about 30%, uh, 33% a, a third of parliamentarians in the country are women. Uh, women in the country have been pushing for 50% uh, um, representation in government. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's commonplace for women to go marching in the street that has been happening for decades now, when there are incidents that occur, whether it's issues around gender-based violence, um, women take to the streets um, frequently to, uh, to protest. And so, yeah, um, also, about 39% of government officials now are women. And yeah, women have said they will not rest until um, we reach 50% and hopefully even beyond that. But we have had a female president. Um, president Joyce Banda came into power in 2012 after she was vice president and the president died. So she, um, she took over from him for a few years. Uh, she was the second a female president on the African continent, second to Madame Johnson Sirleaf in Liberia. Um, but since then, we have had multiple um, presidents on the on the African continent who are women. Something to be proud of. Yeah, so we have um, a number of festivals in Malawi, and I just want to thank uh, Christoph Stacia and um, Karibu Norden because they shared a lot of the um, pictures that are in this presentation. They like to go a lot to festivals. And so one of the festivals, Malawi has a number of festivals that are um, actually some of the key festivals on the African continent. They draw thousands of people to the country. One of the festivals is the Tumaini Festival, which um, calls for peaceful coexistence among people, including um, refugees. So Malawi has a large re pop refugee population. We have an understanding with the UNHCR, the government has an understanding that um, when people come to our borders, particularly to the Northern border where often refugees come in, um, seeking asylum or seeking, um, or, 
you know, seeking asylum because they are for fear of persecution, that the government will admit them and um, they, will, um, they will make Malawi their home. And so we have a refugee camp. So this particular um, festival is hosted uh, by Malawians alongside um, re the refugee community at the refugee camp. It's called the Tumaini Festival. And how many people would typically be in this camp? We have about 40,000 refugees at the camp and, and some don't live at the camp, you know, some live among us. Um, but the, the refugee camp is actually, um, it's overpopulated because again, um, the government has an agreement and an understanding that if people are, are being persecuted and they seek asylum, that they would be admitted. So um, the refugee camp is overpopulated and there are a lot of needs. Um, but the government does work alongside uh, the UNHCR to, to try to meet the needs of, of refugees. Right. And these festivals provide some funds to help with that. Yes. So they show their artwork, um, you know, and their creativity. There's a lot of musicians there at the camp. So to just show people that um, refugees have talent, um, they're human beings just like ourselves, and that we can live together um, and we can coexist in peace. And we, in fact, will see uh, a very successful and admirable refugee later. Um, I'm being teased that I always like talking about food. And yes, I'd like talking about food. So please tell us about the whole range of possibilities. Yeah, so in Malawi, we, um, we grow a lot of different foods. Um, we grow a variety of bananas. So as you can see to the left, a lot of our food um, is cooked with a tomato base and onions. So those are um, foods that we also grow a lot of. And I'm just pointing out the, the farmer. I mean, a lot of people in Malawi grow the food that they're gonna eat. And they often go to the, you said, you mentioned the streets and the farm, the little market and pick up something on the way home from work. I love that idea. Yeah, and so our main food is uh, sima, which is to the left there. Um, that that it's, a, um, it's, a, it's a paste of maize or corn, um, a thick paste that people eat usually with vegetables. But um, as you can see in the pictures here, um, we have some meat, which is, is common for upper middle class people in the city, but not so much in the rural areas because um, meat, livestock, chicken, they're usually assets that um, rural households will keep for um, emergency situations. Say a child is sick, they need to take them to the hospital, they need transportation, they'll sell a chicken or a goat. And so um, meat products are not something that people ordinarily eat all the time, um, but usually vegetables and beans, like you can see to the right there. Mm -hmm. we, we talked a little bit about um, how your friend, your nutritionist friend was trying to steer people to a broader diet. Tell us about that. Yeah, so Stacia is a nutritionist um, in Malawi. She's actually from Wisconsin, but she calls Malawi home. And so she, um, you know, she talks a lot about um, the, the dietary habits um, in Malawi. And so, you know, as I mentioned, we eat in sima, which is the maize or corn paste, usually with vegetables. So you can see here, um, there is some diversity in the vegetables up on top with tomatoes and um, some groundnut or peanuts that have been pounded. Um, and if you saw in the video with, with the, uh, the music video, there was somebody pounding. So that's very common. Um, you know, people pound groundnuts and they put them in the vegetables. So that's something that Stacia, um, as well as other nutritionists in the country are encouraging. But we also grow a lot of foods that we don't eat. So in the other picture, we have avocados, which we grow a lot of and Malawians don't eat too often. Um, we have a lot of grapefruits, a lot of variety of oranges, um, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots. And so um, nutritionists are pushing for us to sort of 
include all of those, those colors in our diets. So we're moving towards that slowly. We are defining art rather broadly. So you'll have a chance to tell us about three different kinds of art. Yeah, so to the left, you can see clay pots. Uh, Malawians are, you know, very much about that kind of um, art, um, pottery, and so you'll see um, based on where people live, if they live along the lakeshore, the, um, the clay pots will look different because it's a different kind of clay, um, you know, along the lakeshore. Um, the patterns also of, of the pottery will be different and the pictures drawn on the pottery. So People along the lakeshore a lot of times will like to have fish, uh, fishermen, um, uh, uh, those kinds of pictures on their art. Um, whereas other um, people um, in, in the highlands will have different kind of pottery. Um, yeah, and then um, I did mention um, to Dr. Creighton that the pottery um, is really interesting because it, um, it, it helps to keep things cool such that um, diabetics in the country, that's how they keep their insulin, you know, in the rural areas because they don't have access to electricity or refrigeration. So they'll put some water in the pot and put it at a, on, uh, in the corner in their home and it's able to, um, to reduce the temperature such that, such that the insulin can remain potent. Um, yeah. And then we have our currency, which um, Dr. Craven pointed out is very colorful. Um, we have purple, green, blue colors um, in our money. And a lot of the, um, the faces that you see are of, um, you know, leaders, past leaders, people who fought for our independence that um, are very historical to the country. Um, people who died during independence or were imprisoned during independence. Our first president, uh, Dr. Kamuzubanda, is on the 1,000 watch a note, um, yeah, so, and, and then we also have some wildlife, although, you know, we struggle compared to our neighbors like Zambia, um, uh, they have been able to manage their wildlife better than we have, but we have a lot of initiatives to, um, to protect, especially elephants, but we have, we do have some of the highest population of hippos, which are, you know, ordinarily ugly creatures, so <laughs> nobody wants to poach hippos, but we have a hippo. So if you come to Malawi, you will not miss the hippos. Um, yeah, and then we do have some um, important authors um, in the country. Legson Kaira is a, is a well-respected scholar who many of us um, have read his book, I Will Try, meaning he will try to get an education. He walked all the way from Malawi to South Africa seeking an education. Um, and then of course, William Kankwamba, who built a wind turbine to power electricity um, during the famine of 2001. So he built a wind turbine using um, bicycle parts and other appliances that ended up pumping water uh, when we had a drought and um, that, that was able to water the gardens, um, not only for his own home, but his neighbors and um, other members of his community. Um, the power was able to, you know, he powered uh, electricity such that uh, kids were able to read after hours, they were able to do their homework and do some studying, and he was, they were also able to, people in the community were able to charge cell phones. So there, um, there has been a film um, made about him, I think it's still on Netflix, starring uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor, so um, that might be something you want to check out, it's a really beautiful film. Very nice. I do want to point out that even though there are many, many, many species of fish in the Lake Malawi, the currency seems to have only one. And you yes, explained so, that to me. <laughs> yes. So again, I think Malawians are just very monotonous about, you know, what their preferences and their diet. So that fish is called jambo. And that's the most famous fish in Malawi. When you come to Malawi, that's what everybody will offer you. Um, and you wouldn't think that we have <laughs> 700 species of fish. Um, yeah. Nice. <clears throat> so let's look at some historical buildings and some more everyday buildings. 
Yeah, so that is um, the Malawi parliament. It is located in the capital city of Lilongwe. It's also um, situated on Capitol Hill. So uh, we call it Capitol Hill. Um, and so the speaker of the house, uh, Catherine Godanihara is a woman. Um, so she's the speaker of parliament uh, currently. And like I said, we have um, a, a third representation of women who are parliamentarians um, making the laws of our land. What about more ordinary homes, people's homes? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, we have uh, both urban and rural environments in Malawi. So um, if you are in the urban area, like in Lilongwe or Blantyre or Zomba, Mzuzu, you will see um, houses like the one below that are mostly constructed of brick and cement and have, they have uh, corrugated uh, sheets for roofing. Um, whereas in the rural area, we have grass thatched roofing uh, with uh, clay houses that are made of clay, um, like the ones you see up on top. And I guess they're cooler in the summertime. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have air conditioning, being careful about what your roof is made of makes a lot of sense. Definitely. So we're gonna look at some of the famous, some of your favorite people of your country. Yeah, so to the right, um, we have Mireille Twaigira. She um, is a refugee who came to Malawi as a child from Rwanda. And I met her, she came to St. Norbert College. She was invited to speak uh, by the university there. So I met her there. Um, so she um, is somebody who is well re respected in the country uh, because she came to the country as a refugee and she scored really high on the national exam. Um, she was one of the top students. Um, she scored almost a perfect score. So um, she got a scholarship to go and study medicine in China, but because she didn't have, um, you know, because she's considered stateless, she didn't have documentation to be able to travel for her studies, um, parliament had to meet and make a decision around um, giving her a Malawian passport. Um, you know, so she, uh, she was given a Malawian passport just for that very reason to allow her to go to China to study. So she completed her studies and um, she's one of our doctors serving in the country at one of the major uh, central hospitals in, in, the, in the city in Blantyre. What a great story. Yeah, and then below is Ekari Mpundula. She is um, one of the acclaimed authors that we have. Um, she writes poetry, um, she writes short stories, and so she has uh, received a number of awards on the African continent. She's well respected, so she's an upcoming uh, writer that is admired. And then to the, uh, to the very left, or to my left, um, is President Lazarus Chaguera, the current president of the country, along with the vice president at the bottom, uh, Vice President Saulo Stima. And um, the two of them were uh, instrumental along with others in the country in contesting last year's uh, elections. And so um, as some of you might know, um, Malawi was in the news last year because there were so many irregularities, even though we had international observers in the country who said the election was free and fair, um, people protested the election um, because there were so many irregularities. And so um, the sitting president, um, you know, there were clashes between the police and the citizens um, during the protests um, because the president had ordered the police to arrest the protesters. And so the military needed to step in and the military has been touted and uh, as, as doing a great job um, in that regard, because uh, General Nund, we're at the height of um, the unrest and the clashes between police and citizens said um, his responsibility was to uphold the constitution of the country and to protect the citizens and to maintain peace. And so the military um, supported or at least protected 
the citizens so that they could demonstrate and that they, you know, they could have the military upheld um, citizens' rights to, to protest um, peacefully. And so um, the judges heard the case earlier this year. And so five judges who also included a woman um, read um, a statement that was 500 pages long. It took over seven hours and everybody was listening, including people in the rural areas in their, on their radios were listening intently. And the judges said that um, the Malawi Electoral Commission had failed to uphold its responsibilities, its constitutional responsibilities, and that it had failed the people, that um, the, um, there were too many irregularities to say that the election had been free and fair. There were um, some, some of the, uh, the, poll, the, the ballots that were collected had been whited out. So there was evidence to suggest that there were irregularities. And so the judges called for um, a, 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 re, a rerun. So um, the two uh, gentlemen that you see here um, were from different parties, but they came together and um, co contested the, the sitting president. And so they won um, the election. And Freedom House, which is a think tank um, that analyzes democracy um, in over 80 countries around the world, has said that Malawi is the only country where democracy has improved during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, citing this particular situation and how uh, people were allowed to protest um, and the courts upheld the right of the people and they upheld democracy um, in calling for fresh elections. Wow. <clears throat> of course, there's time for fun. Uh, we see children here both at work and at play. Yeah, so a lot of Malawians, as I said, 85% of Malawians live in the rural area. And so, um, you know, they're mostly living in um, uh, smallholder farming communities. So um, children do a lot of work alongside their families, growing food. Um, as you mentioned, we have a lot of food. We, we eat fresh food every day because it's available. Um, people sell by the roadside, um, even in the cities. Um, on your way home from work, people will buy vegetables, tomatoes, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, we do a lot of um, growing of crops. Um, but uh, during the school holidays, people like to hang out at the lake. That's their favorite hangout for a lot of people, especially people who live along the lake, but also um, people who live in town like to go to the lake for, for fun. So we're going to trans, I guess you're going to transport ourselves to an evening in Malawi. Sure, yeah. So as I mentioned, um, Malawi is, is called Lake of Stars because, um, you know, at night is when the fishermen go to catch their fish. And so um, when, they're, um, when the canoes are on the lake, um, the picture that they get, you know, with the, with the lanterns that they carry um, as they're catching their fish is, is a very beautiful picture under the stars. And so um, stars, you know, before uh, I came to the U.S., stars was something that I, I just took for granted um, because uh, more, even in the city in Malawi, but especially in the rural area, uh, because you don't have a lot of electricity, um, there, um, you can see the stars uh, really brightly when you sit outside. And so uh, a lot of times people will sit um, outside by the fire after they've had their dinner um, and tell stories and laugh under the stars and under the moon. Yes. And uh, you're going to, um, I guess, sing us a song, the kind of song that children sing when they're hoping the moon will come out so they can come out and play. Yeah, I'll do my best. I, you know, I'll keep my day job as faculty at the College <laughs> of Nursing at UW. We very much appreciate but, hearing your voice. <laughs> sure, so this is a song that as children we, we sang and you know, continues to be sung um, in Malawi by kids. 
because when the moon is out, it's a lot easier to see and to play. Um, you know, if you're playing uh, like hopscotch or that kind of stuff, you can see better when the moon is out. So this particular song is one that calls out the moon to come out so that we can come out to play. And it goes, Mwezu wale tisewele timbe, Mwezu wale tisewele timbe, Inu makolo anakuita nani, Kutimuza onezi menetajita nanu. Yay, thank you, that's so beautiful. I love the idea that we're calling the moon out to play. Lovely, thank you. And with that thought, I would like to thank you very much, Lucy, for your presentation, um, for sharing so warmly and beautifully um, your knowledge and love for your country. I would like to thank also our audience for uh, participating or in, in enjoying this journey with, with, with Lucy together. Uh, we are going to look at some uh, other questions and you're invited to ask questions as well. At this point, I would like to thank also uh, the College of Letters and Science and the Center for Gravitation, Cosmology and Astrophysics at UWM who helps support the planetarium and make this programming possible. Um, I have two questions for you and then we'll take questions from the audience, which I invite you to put in the chat of your, uh, of your YouTube channel. So my first question is, what do you miss most about Malawi? I think what I miss most is the people. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, Malawi is called the warm heart of Africa. So Malawians, um, I guess that's why I feel at home in the Midwest, because they're a lot like Midwesterners. Um, they, they like to joke and, um, you know, you, they, they're never strangers to you. You know, you can meet somebody and, and have a good laugh, even if you don't know them. Um, yeah, so that's what I miss the most. And what's your favorite place to visit there? I would say um, the rural areas. So as I mentioned, my father, um, my, my family from my father's side, they're from Rumpi up north and uh, my family from my mother's side, they're from Ncheu in central Malawi. And so um, visiting the rural area, um, particularly um, like in Northern Malawi, I know African people came, the migration of African people is very complex. Um, you know, and so people came from different parts um, of the continent, particularly in, uh, um, in the central region to places like Malawi, but my father's family claimed that they are the original Malawians <laughs> in northern Malawi. So when I go um, to Rumpi, it, you know, I know that that is definitely the home of my ancestors. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I like that a lot. Um, if you were to go there, you would see people um, in their gardens, carrying their holes um, uh, and digging um, and um, you know, fetching water, uh, doing their farming. You would see uh, children um, reading their notebooks from school. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, we will take more questions. I just want to bring, bring to people's attention. This is the second program in a series of five programs. And these are the dates. We won't have a program the Friday after Thanksgiving, um, but we will have programs next week, the 4th of December and the 11th. Um, so I will check and see what questions we have. Um, did some ethnic... David Cox asks, did some ethnic or geographic feature guide the drawing of Malawi's border? Uh, I think, you know, uh, if you read books like The Scramble for Africa, I think, um, you know, the, the borders on the African continent were primarily drawn because people were, um, you know, the, the British and other colonialists were 
um, you know, trying to carve out pieces of the continent for themselves. And so that's why the borders are, are really strangely drawn. And that's why sometimes um, we have conflicts that, that don't make any sense. For example, about the lake who own, you know, how, how can uh, two countries uh, own the same lake? Um, and so it becomes really um, complicated or how can a country own part of the lake um, that is situated in another country? So yeah. Um, yeah, I think we would need to ask historians and geographers about more detail regarding that. But I know that definitely colonialism um, played an important role in how the borders are drawn. Uh, Mara and Maria uh, says, thank you, Dr. Lucy. And uh, other people, of course, love the photos. Um, is healthcare available to all or are there discrepancies? Asks Paul MacArthur. Yeah, so we have universal health care in Malawi. So in fact, um, Malawi's public health system, even though it's considered one of the poorest countries in the world, the public health system is actually functional and is touted one of the best in the world um, because we have immunization rates upwards of 98% in some areas. Like we have very high um, immunization rates. So even now, um, with the COVID-19 pandemic, we have had um, a little less than um, 6,000 cases of, of COVID-19 and um, le slightly less than 200 cases. So when I checked yesterday, we were at 185 for a country of 18 million. So, um, you know, even though um, we, the infrastructure is poor, we have, you know, really high maternal mortality rates. Um, I have a colleague in the College of Nursing also from Malawi. She does research on um, preterm babies. We have the highest rate of preterm births in the, in the world. We also have the highest rates of cervical cancer in the world. Um, but the government is very responsive to, um, to research. Um, immediately that something is published, they, they, they take it seriously. They're quick to implement policy, um, you know, so we have the, right now we do have the HPV vaccine that is being rolled out um, that started last year and the uptake of that vaccine was over 80%. So we do have, um, we have a lot of challenges, uh, but we have universal healthcare and a lot of effort on the part of the government and the Ministry of Health. Excellent. Um... Uh, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing these words correctly, but Kelsey asks, what is your favorite ndiwo to take with Nsima? Um, I think chicken livers. I really like chicken livers. <laughs> and, uh, uh, can you explain those words for us? Ndiwo is relish. So uh, Nsima is the, the corn paste that I mentioned. And usually that's eaten with what is um, in English we call relish um, or ndiwo, which is the side dish that you saw in, in the plate. So that person probably knows a lot about Malawi and has probably been there too. I see. Yeah. Um, uh, Rosemary asks, why is Malawi called the warm heart of Africa? I think it's because of the people. So, um, uh, yeah, the, the people are, are friendly, um, you know, for them, they consider um, everybody a part of them. So, you know, in order to fit in, you have to, you have to be part of them. And that's why um, we welcome refugees, because we, we feel as though they're part of us. And so, you know, even though they're supposed to be at the refugee camp, um, there are a lot of jokes about, you know, them you know, people meeting them in town and they're not speaking Chichewa and people laughing saying, aren't you supposed to be at the camp? But, you know, <laughs> but, you know, for us, it's, it's um, we, uh, I think Malawians um, are happy when, when people call Malawi home as well. Um, we have thank yous. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit, I know that you take students to Malawi, nursing students, what is that experience like for you and for them? Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. I think 
um, you know, it, it's a great opportunity um, to have them um, spend time in, in my homeland and for me to be able to share that experience with them. Um, yeah, so I think I mentioned to you that usually um, when I, I tell them if you commit a faux pas, all you need to do is tell the chief, I'm from here, this is my home, then there's nothing they can do to you because, you know, you can't throw your child out of your house <laughs> even if they commit, um, you know, something egregious. So um, I joke with the students about that all the time. And um, yeah, last time I think, you know, um, they were, uh, you know, they, they were, I think some of the students were concerned about what was going on in the U.S. And so they did ask for a piece of land and the chief said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cute. Um, uh, Joanne asks, um, hi, Dr. Lucy, will you ever move back? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's, I think most immigrants struggle with that a lot. Uh, fortunately, um, a lot of my research is in Malawi. So I spend a lot of time um, back home. Uh, before the pandemic, I was going um, home maybe even three times a year. So um, it, it, it wasn't too bad. Um, but yeah, um, I, of course, definitely when I retire, um, I am building my house now. Um, in Malawi, so I, I will be going home, um, but it's challenging because now I'm also doing a lot of research that I find meaningful in the US. Um, so it sort of um, becomes challenging. That's a challenge I think most immigrants uh, face. But yes, if I, if I had an opportunity to return home, um, I would. Yes. Um... Uh, Gibson asks, does it ever get cold in Malawi? What is the climate like? Yeah, so it does get cold in Malawi, probably up to about 40 degrees is probably the coldest that it would get. Um, we don't get snow, but it does get cold and we don't have central heating. So that makes it um, a little bit challenging, but yeah. Um, yeah, it, it gets cold. We, we only have two seasons, the rainy season. We have one se rainy season per annum, which is why we're also challenged in terms of our agriculture because then we only have one harvest. So we have the rainy season and then we have the dry season, which is the cold season. Uh, what, how many months are each or when exactly does this happen? So the rainy season goes from about October to probably January or February. And then um, it starts getting really cold around June. So it gets progressively cold with um, very cold season um, in June. But of course, with climate change, as, as, um, as many might know, that tends to affect um, low income countries the most. And so Malawi is really affected by, by climate change. So we find that like right now, um, my family has been telling me we were expecting rains in October and it still hasn't started raining. So, you know, that's problematic for, for farmers who have already probably planted um, and are expecting the rains. So that means that sometimes they'll lose um, that entire crop. And then, you know, once the rains start, then they'll have to, um, uh, you know, put down their seed again. So that's more seed, you know, that they need to, to put out. So, you know, that, that really affects um, low income families negatively. I see. Um, the, uh, John tells us, interesting to see the book you showed, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, fascinating story about doing a lot with a little, which I think seems to be a, a, a real, theme in this in this wonderful country of yours um i uh we don't have other questions i don't see anything else um i'd love to give you um the last word and i like dr lucy um so what else would you like to close with well, um, you know, for those who are watching, I would uh, encourage you to visit Malawi, um, you know, after the pandemic is over. Um, as you know, many low income countries have been affected, um, particularly countries that are dependent on tourism and Malawi 
um, is one such country that, you know, we don't have a lot of exports like other countries. And so, um, you know, it helps when, when people come to the country and stimulate our economy, buy local products, buy uh, pottery and, and other things, uh, baskets that people weave, go visit the lake. Um, and we have national parks. Um, there are hippos, I can definitely guarantee you that. <laughs> So, um, you know, if, if you um, would care to visit an African country, um, Malawi could be, you know, a destination that you could pick that that would be great. Well, again, thank you so much for taking us on this lovely journey. And, um, and uh, I hope that um, our audience can join us for the next programs as well. Um, so again, thank you very much, and I hope you all have a wonderful, a wonderful evening. Thank you. <laughs>